play a quick game of Never Have I Ever, 80 for Brady edition. First things first, never have I ever ghosted a guy. What's ghosted? Oh. <laughs> well, I have. <laughs> and Jane's the one that hasn't. No, I always married them. <laughs> never have I ever had an edible. Have it. Never Raise have your I hand if you've had gummies. Well, okay. <laughs> These are good. Very good. Oh, careful, they're high dosage. High dosage? Excuse me, I'm looking for someone. Are you okay? I'm Guy Fieri. Never have I ever been to the Super Bowl. There we go. <laughs> Sally, and you're the sports fan. What is happening with this? I like watching it at home. Oh, okay. There you go. That's her superstition. She likes watching. I'm a home person. You got it. It takes Jane to get me out. To the Super Bowl. <laughs> Never have I ever made out in a closet. Sally, how's a backseat? No, that's right. No backseat. Huh? Oh, backseat. Backseat. Oh, I was good in front and back. <laughs> Who in this group do we think is the most flirty? Rita. You pointing to Lily? No. <laughs> well, yeah, but. <laughs> Lita, she's not. I'm, I'm the sex one. You are the sex. The sex person. You are. <laughs> I am. Yeah. It's who well, I am. Well, we're all spin the but bottle we just like. Don't we don't talk about it as with much the as she Tell me the art of flirting. I've been told that uh, men uh, react to, you know, the, the slightest warmth mm. that a person would exhibit as a human being to another human being. Like, if you reach out and touch, you're speaking and you touch someone's hand or now stand. Now they be arrested for that. It was this locker room scene that Rita says got her all turned on at 90 years old. But every one of the ladies have their share of fun. In 80 for Brady, hitting theaters February 3rd, the four besties are on a wild mission to meet Tom Brady at the Super Bowl. Taking this one, he's cute. Can we just start with Tom? Is it really true that, that you said your knees gave way just a little bit when he walked in the room? That's true. Oh, oh yeah. His presence just filled up the whole trailer, and I, I got so weak in the knees, yeah. And he was so sweet. Yeah. He, he went sweet. into all our trailers. No, Why? he didn't go into mine. Well, that's because you I, went to him. I know. I stood out there and welcomed them all in. You were the welcoming committee, right? I was right? the welcoming committee. That's what I because heard. Because, you know, they're coming on our turf now. I would feel really scared if I were going on a football field to play football. Um, and so I stood up there and welcomed him as they drove up. Hi, I'm Sally. Can I get you some coffee? Now, is that true or is it because you are just a big sports fan, Sally, that you wanted to be the welcome? Well, I am a big sports fan. That is true. And I did want to see them and shake their hands. But I also uh, recognized I, I would feel really nervous. Let's go! Oh my God, that's hot! Did anybody else's knees get a little weak with Tom? Or is... Our knees have troubles. We have all we have <laughs> knee issues anyway. <laughs> Boy, do I have bad knees. <laughs> Has nothing to do with Tom Brady. Nothing at all to do with Tom <laughs> Brady. Of course, there's moments when you go, "Wow, look at that person," and then you just get your act together and yeah. act like a. You know, and marry them. <laughs> you marry them in this case. <laughs> Seriously, has it happened in your past any any other time? Yeah, Marlon Brando. Oh, that's a whole nother story. Oh, that's, that's a novella. That's, that's a novella. <laughs> yes. I mean, Burt Reynolds was no, you know, he was pretty fabulous. Well, yeah. He, At least he, we thought so he, on the outside. On the outside. He was pretty fabulous. He was, he was. Pretty fabulous, but I had to, you know, I'm, I was an actor. I have to, like, behave. And I worked with Paul Newman, and trust me, that wasn't easy to go oh, into a you table go. read with Paul and there act you like go. you knew what you were doing. There you go. I conquered it by being really foul mouth. Just as dirty talking as I possibly That's sexy could be. To people, I don't know. This is a spicy wings contest. I could use a little spice. Wrong. Oh, Christ. So big. Thank you. Jane literally is is one person in my life, and I don't have many, admittedly, who um, would not let me go. I tried. I tried to know. And she would just um, early on, you know, try to befriend me. And when I would back away, she said, "Well, that just time's up. You're, we're going out. Come on." Every time I've had to talk about Jane, I end up crying because it had been so incredibly important to me to have Jane in my life that would do that and say, knock on my door, call me, and say, "Okay, what time uh, next Thursday will you meet me at the?" Okay. And we always have a good time. And we always yeah, had a good time. Jane has been so important to me because of that. Really. Isn't that what friendship is? That we face the unknown together? Jane just won't take no for an answer. I've been fascinated with her since the 70s. <laughs> and I've 
you know, I read all her interviews, I identify with her, and I just decided that I'm going to be her friend. She's going to be my friend, and that's <laughs> all there is to it. That's why, for me, this film was really special, because I had never, I mean, I've watched every performance multiple times of hers, mm -hmm. seen her on Broadway, asked her how she did that. Now I got to see her, I mean, it's a very different kind of film, but I got to see her create a character and bring it to life, and it was, it was a really special, you know, this is a light, funny movie, but still, I, I could see her work. I agree, I think, well, first of all, I'm, I am a huge, huge fan of Sally's well, let's work. Let's not talk about me. Yes, let's Excuse talk about me. you. Excuse me, I'm speaking, <laughs> shut up. So, oh, see, see, we can do that. Yeah. Anyway, I simply wanted to say, corroborate in a way, that uh, when I saw her in Sybil, I, my jaw dropped for at least two months. It was my idea and she stole it. I wanted to sing Easter Ball and really, really bad. Every time I thought of how she did that, she played, you know, a multiple character person, one person. And she became these different people. And then there's this one here. Yeah. Who does it on stage. Who does it on stage. Doesn't she, though? And without ever leaving the stage, becomes yeah. all these different people. Yeah. How I wanted to be Sybil. <laughs> oh, I, I thought you wanted to be... Wait, wait a minute. Well, you Did you, your own you said you wanted to be Gidget. Well, that's wait, when you I was young and frivolous. Sybil. Here's what I always remember, because everyone, of course, talks about this, uh, the astounding talent as an actress. Mm -hmm. But the thing I saw her on, do, on stage that absolutely put me away for a month, Lily, yes, was that she went from a squat <laughs> on stage, she went from a squat into a stand L on her leg. I mean, I, I, I've never seen anyone do that. She, you know what kind of size that takes? Yeah. Hey. And back? Well, she that's a from thing of the past. Squat, oh, that's a <laughs> <too. laughs> And yeah. jumped up and We don't do that anymore. I've never forgotten that. Ready and action. Early on in the movie, in, in the very early scenes, we were all working together and everybody had to move very fast and be in the right place at the right time and turn the TV on at the, like this. And, you know, having worked seven years with Lily, I'm, I was used to kind of pushing her around or, you know, like if she was a little bit off her mark or was like... She's and so very good to hit she, her mark. She, she, um, right into that light. Rita, I felt Rita was, was there was a problem because she wasn't moving fast enough to her seat so that then Lily could come in. And, and so I pulled on her jacket and I think I pushed her at one point and, and I was offended. And it was the weekend, and she sent me a text, and she said, not on my watch. I am 90 years old. You do not treat me like that. This is a film about women's friendship, and that will not stand, that kind of behavior. You cannot push me, and you cannot do that. And I was just, oh, that is so great, because you know what a guy would have done? He would have harbored a grudge. It's and okay. she got it out and, and didn't harbor it. She's from Puerto Rico. So it's all in her heart and her emotions. You know, just, get it out and Respect it's over. Respect 